We hear a lot of words in anime series and manga that we don't really know, especially for people who are new to this world. A word we hear again and again is otaku. Today, I want to talk to you about the history and meaning of the word otaku. So let's talk about the meaning, the origin, and the usage of the word. But before we start, go ahead and subscribe. Also, press that bell icon to get the latest updates. So now I'll stop wasting your time, so let's get into the video. Otaku is a Japanese term for people with consuming interests, particularly in anime and manga. Its contemporary use originated with Akio Nakamori's 1983 essay in Manga Boriko. Otaku may be used as a pejorative. Its negativity stems from a stereotypical view of otaku. In the media's reportings on Tsutomu Miyazaki, the otaku murderer, in 1989, according to studies published in 2013, the term has become less negative, and an increasing number of people now identify themselves as otaku, me included both in Japan and elsewhere. Otaku subculture is a central theme of various anime and manga works, documentaries, and academic research. The subculture began in the 1980s as changing social mentalities and the nurturing of otaku traits by Japanese schools, combined with the resignation of such individuals to become social outcasts. The subculture's birth coincided with the anime boom. After the release of works such as Mobile Suit Gundam before it branched into the comic market, the otaku subculture continued to grow with with the expansion of the internet and media, as more anime, video games, shows, and comics were created. The definition of otaku subsequently became more complex, and numerous classifications of otaku emerged. In 2005, the Nomura Research Institute divided otaku into 12 groups and estimated the size and market impact of each of these groups. Other institutions have split it further, focused on a single otaku interest. These publications classify distinct groups, including anime, manga, camera, automobile, idol, and electronics otaku. In 2005, the economic impact of otaku was estimated to be as high as around 2 trillion yen, or 18 billion US dollars. When we talk about the main origin of the word, otaku is derived from a Japanese term for another person's house or family. This word is often used metaphorically as an honorific second person pronoun. In this usage, its literal translation is you. For example, early in the anime Macross first aired in 1982, the characters Hikaru Ichijo and Len Minmei use the term this way to address one another until they get to know each other better. The modern slang form which is distinguished from the older usage by being written only in hiragana, katakana, and rarely in romaji, first appeared in public discourse in the 1980s. Through the work of humorist and essayist Akio Nakamura, his 1983 series Research for Otaku, Otaku no Kenkyu, printed in the Lolicon magazine manga Buriko, applied the term to unpleasant fans and a character. Animators Haruhiku Mikamoto and Shoji Kawamori had used the term between the themselves as an honorific second person pronoun since the late 1970s. Supposedly, some fans used it past this point in their relationships where others would have moved on to a less formal style, because this misuse indicated social awkwardness. Nakamori chose the word itself to label the fans. Morikawa Kaichiro, an author and lecturer at Meiji University, identified this as the origin of its contemporary usage. Another claim for the origin of the term comes from the works of sci-fi author Motoko Arai who used the word in her novels as a second-person pronoun, and the readers adopted the term for themselves. However, different claim points to a 1989 Variety magazine essay. In 1989, the case of Tsutomu Miyazaki, the otaku murderer, brought the fandom very negatively to national attention. Miyazaki, who randomly chose and murdered four girls, had a collection of over 5,000 videotapes, some containing anime and slasher films, that were found interspersed with videos and pictures of his victims. Now that's fucked up. Later that year, the contemporary knowledge magazine Besatsu Takurajima dedicated its 104th volume to the topic of otaku. It was called Otaku no Han, or meaning the book of otaku, and delved into the subculture of otaku with 19 articles by otaku insiders, among them Akio Nakamori. This publication had been claimed by scholar Rudyard Pesimo to have popularized the term. In modern Japanese slang, the term otaku is mostly equivalent to geek or nerd. 
both in the broad sense, of course. A technological geek would be Gichutsu Otaku, and an academic nerd would be Gukake Otaku or Gariban. I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not Japanese, forgive me, but in a more derogatory manner than used in the West. However, it can relate to any fan of any particular theme, topic, hobby, or form of entertainment. When these people are referred to as otaku, they are judged for their behaviors, and people suddenly see an otaku as a person unable to relate to reality. The word entered English as a loan word from the Japanese language. It's typically used to refer to a fan of anime or manga, but can also refer to Japanese video games or Japanese culture in general. The American magazine Otaku USA popularizes and covers these aspects. The usage of the word is a source of contention among some fans, owing to its negative connotations and stereotyping of the fandom. Widespread English exposure to the term came in 1988 with the release of Gunbuster, which refers to anime fans as otaku. Gunbuster was released officially in English in March 1990. The term's usage spread throughout rec.arts.anime with discussions about otaku no video's portrayal of otaku before its 1994 English release. Positive and negative aspects, including the pejorative use, were intermixed. The term was also popularized by William Gibson's 1996 novel Idoro, which references otaku. When we talk about classification and types of the word otaku, the Namura Research Institute, or NRI, has made two major studies into otaku. The first in 2004 in a revised study, with a more specific definition in 2005. The 2005 study defines 12 major fields of otaku interests. Of these groups, manga, or Japanese comics, was the largest, with 350,000 individuals in an 83 billion yen market scale. Idol otaku was the next largest group, with 280,000 individuals and 61 billion yen. Travel otaku with 250,000 individuals and 81 billion yen, PC otaku with 190,000 individuals and 36 billion yen, video game otaku with 160,000 individuals and 21 billion yen, automobile individuals with 140,000 individuals and 54 billion yen, animation or anime otakus with 110,000 individuals and around 20 billion yen. The remaining five categories includes mobile IT equipment otaku, audiovisual equipment otaku, camera otaku, fashion otaku, and railway otaku. These values were partially released with a much higher estimate in 2004, but this definition focused on consumerism and not the unique psychological characteristics of otaku used in the 2005 study. NRI's 2005 study also put forth five archetypes of otaku. The first is the family-oriented otaku, who has broad interests and is more mature than other otaku. Their object of interest is secretive and they are quote-unquote closet otaku. The second term is the serious leaving my own mark on the world otaku, with interests in mechanical or business personality fields. The third type is media-sensitive multiple interest otaku, who diverse interests are shared with others. The fourth type is the outgoing and more assertive otaku, who gain recognition by promoting their hobby. Huh. Wait. Never mind. The last is the fan magazine obsessed otaku, which is predominantly female with a small group of males being the moe type. The secret hobby is focused on the production or interest in fan works. The Himajin Research Institute found that moe-related content was worth around 88.8 .8 billion yen, or, get ready, 807 million US dollars, in 2005, and one analyst estimated the market could be as much as 2 trillion yen, or 18 billion dollars. Japan-based Tokyo Otaku Mode, a place for news relating to otaku, has been liked on Facebook almost 10 million times, and I might be one of them myself. Other classifications of otaku interests include vocaloid, cosplay, figures, and professional wrestling. Yes, you heard me right, there's otaku that are that into professional wrestling, as categorized by the Yano Research Institute. Yano Research reports and tracks market growth and trends in sectors heavily influenced by otaku consumerism. In 2012, it noted around 30% of growth in dating sims and online gaming otaku, while vocaloid, cosplay, idols, and maid services grew 
grew by 10%, confirming its 2011 predictions. When we talk about the media, otaku often participates in self-mocking through the production or interest in humor directed at their subculture. Anime and manga otaku are the subject of numerous self-critical works, such as Otaku no Video, which contains a live interview mockumentary that pokes fun at the otaku subculture and includes Gainax's own staff as the interviewees. Other works depict the otaku subculture less critically, such as Genshiken and Comic Party. A well-known novel come manga come anime is Welcome to the NHK, which is absolutely amazing but varies with what you read or watch, so be careful, which focuses on the subcultures popular with otaku and highlights other social outcasts, such as the Hikamori and Neats. Works that focus on an otaku character include Watamote, the story of an unattractive and unsociable Atome game otaku, who exhibits delusions about her social status. Watamote is a self-mocking insight that follows the heroine's delusions and attempts to reform herself only by facing reality, with comedic results on the path to popularity. An American documentary, Otaku Unite, focuses more on the American side of the otaku culture. But that's about all I got for today, so tell me you guys, what do you know about the word otaku? Make sure to let me know if you learned anything from this video down in the comments sections. And with that, I'm out.